Hey everyone, welcome to the new tutorial video and this time I have something new. I want to introduce you to Yasmin or Lamchi on social media channels. She's a member of our group at Polygon Runway and she's creating this beautiful hand-painted stylized art. So I approached her if she would share her skills with us and luckily she said yes. So here's a new tutorial from Yasmin. First, please go ahead and check out her content and her social media channels at Lamchi. And let us know in the comments if you like content like this, if you enjoyed it, if you want to see more and what kind of hand painted tutorials would you like to see in the future or if you'd like to see a full course teaching you skills like this. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with news at Polygon Runway, please go ahead and check out our website polygonrunway.com where you can find courses specifically designed to take you from zero to hero in the shortest time amount possible. And now I give the word to Yasmin who will guide you through beautiful hand painted 3D illustration. Hello everyone, welcome to my first ever video. I am so excited to be here and be a part of Polygon Runway. My name is Yasmin or Lumchi on my socials. And my role in Roman's team is to sort of go into the more artsy side of 3D modeling. I will be specializing in hand painted texturing. I have designed this tutorial to get you started and I really hope you find it useful. Today we are going to make this lovely but sadly inedible slice of lemon cake. The focus is texturing so the model will be appropriately basic. Let's begin. I have my camera settings up on the right. If you could go to preferences and please make sure the following are enabled. Add mesh extra objects, emulate free button mouse and orbit around selection. After this, please delete the cube and you're going to insert a cylinder and change its number of vertices to 18. After this, you're going to go to the top down view and scale it up to about eight by eight, like so. And then you're going to scale it down on the z-axis to about here. After this, enter edit mode, face select, select the top face, press I to inset it to about there. And then you're going to press E to extrude it down a little bit and scale this face down to smoothen the shape. With the plate done, we are now going to make the slice of cake. So please insert a plane, go into the top down view, edit mode, vertex select, select these top two and merge them at center. Press G, Y and 1 to extend that vertex and you're going to scale it up to about there. After that, you're going to press E, 2.8 to extrude it upwards. Please insert a loop cut here and then you're going to press A, R, Z, minus 90. Now we will model the cream swirl on top of the cake. If you go to insert mesh and go to extras, simple star, I would like you to change the number of points to 7. To achieve a spiral form, it will take a few steps. If you go to, go to edit mode and select all of these top faces here, and I'm just going to bring this down very slightly. First thing I would like you to do is rotate it just to about here. And then you're going to press E to extrude and you're going to scale this down. Rotate very slightly. And you're going to extrude again. And you're going to rotate again just a bit and scale it down a lot more. Extrude this top face again and merge it as center. Add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out and just scale it down like so. And now we are just going to rearrange the swirl on top of the cake like so. We are almost there with the modeling. Now we're going to make the lemon slice. I'd like you to insert a circle, change its number of vertices to 18. Then you're going to go into edit mode, you're going to select all and press F to fill. Right click it and click poke faces. Go to vertex select, select them all in this pattern like this and delete them. Then you're going to grab this vertex here and just drag it out slightly like so. Also that I'd like you to rotate the view, select all and then extrude slightly upwards like so. Then you're going to go into face select and select these faces here and scale them up on the z axis a little bit. The lemon slice is complete. We are just going to bring it up and leave it in its original rotation so it's easier to paint. Next we're going to model the leaf. I'd like you to insert a plane, go into edit mode, you're going to scale it down on the y-axis and you're going to insert some loop cuts here. After that you're going to grab the top two vertices and scale them down just to shape the leaf like so. After this you're going to insert another loop cut in the middle and two more on either side. I'm just going to select this middle loop here and deselect vertices on the either end. You can follow what I'm doing here. I'm just selecting various vertices and just shaping the leaf 
just to give a nice sort of organic uh, leaf, sh leaf shape. We have now completely completed our modeling. We are now ready to create our texture. So just make sure they're all named up here in your outliner. Open a new tab like so. And you're going to change the editor to a UV editor. Click new to create your texture and call it lemon cake texture. The resolution you're going to give it is 2048 by 2048, which is adequate for what we're going to make today. For our objects to unwrap correctly, we need to seam them. Enter edit mode for the plate and you're going to double click and mark seam. This is why we enabled emulate free button mouse earlier. It makes selecting loops very, very easy. Now we're going to enter edit mode for the slice of cake. And for this kind of shape, I like to separate the top face from the bottom one. All you have to do is select the face, press U and mark seam. It will seam the entire parameter of the face. As a general rule of thumb, I like to do my seams away from the viewer. So I'm going to select these two back edges here and mark them as well. This way the object will unwrap flatly. With rounder shapes, I do a front and back approach, splitting them vertically. Turn off the modify visibility in the viewport so you can see it easier. And you're going to select the edges like so, literally splitting the object in half. As the area beneath the swirl is flat, we are also going to separate it. Simply double click the edge to select the loop and also mark the seam here. Finally, we are going to seam the lemon slice. With edge select on, you are going to select the perimeter like so using control. And you are going to do the same on the other side. After this, I would like you to place another seam just over here. Now, to create your texture at last, you are going to select these five objects here. And you are going to go into edit mode, press A to select all, U and unwrap. Let's edit our UVs a bit. Change the UV selection mode to island. This allows you to manipulate an entire UV. You can grab them, rotate them, and scale them. Increasing the size of UVs increases their capacity for detail. The smaller the UV, the less resolution it has. Therefore, you must think about which parts of this scene require the most detail and scale accordingly. To check which exact face, edge, or vertex a UV corresponds to, turn on UV sync selection and select a face on the UV or the object itself. When you're done, don't forget to turn off UV Sync Selection. If the UV editor goes blank, simply press A to select all. Select the cake slices UV and press R minus 90. I like to place corresponding UVs together, so I am just rearranging them. Feel free to follow along or arrange them however you like. To alter the individual faces of UVs, just change the selection mode. Please ensure that you save your texture, as Blender doesn't do this automatically when it's created. Turn the compression down to zero to ensure the best quality. Great work so far, we're now ready to paint our model. Go to the material preview mode and create a new material, call it lemon cake. Change your shader to emission and plug in your texture by clicking the yellow dot here and selecting image texture. Set the texture interpolation to the closest so that the texture is displayed in high quality. Enter texture paint mode, and to open and close your brush settings, press N. To switch between your colors, press X. Select the fill tool. Press X to switch to black, and I'm going to give you a hex to enter here, which is DAC9FF. Simply click to fill the cake. We don't only want shadows, so I'm going to show you how to mask parts of your object. Select the paint mask icon up here, and ensure you have the select box tool turned on. This way you can select faces on your object and only these ones will be affected. With the faces selected like so, go back to your paint tool, press X to switch back to white and click to fill. Go back to the select box tool, click the center face here, go to your fill tool, turn the opacity down to 0.5 and click. Now you can see the colors on the model look quite washed out compared to the texture on the left. What you're going to do to fix that is go to your render settings, open up color management, Change the view transform to standard and change the look to medium high contrast. Now it looks better. Assign the texture to your cake and enter texture paint mode. I recommend saving your colors by creating a color palette like so. Now I'm going to give you the hex for the body of the cake, which will be FFD8A0. Don't forget to change the strength back up to one and click to fill. Now we need some frosting, so turn on the paint moss tool and select box, select the top face like so and select these two faces back here. Back to the fill tool, I am going to give you a new hex, which is FFF2DA. Click to fill and add it to your color palette. 
Now we will use the loop cut as a guide for our filling, so change the editor to image editor and change it from view to paint. For this part we will be using the brush. Go back to box select mode and select the faces like so. Go back to your color palette and select the last color you added and turn off pen pressure for strength. Here I have added the color of the cake body as a secondary color. Starting about here, I would like you to draw a line across. It doesn't have to be perfect, as the filling of a cake is never perfect. Rotate your slice and check that you're happy with the way it looks. Draw a vertical line here to enhance the look of the frosting and do the same on the other side. Let's make the frosting a bit more interesting. We can do this by creating a melted effect. Draw some waves along the top of the cake like so. You can follow along or draw them however you like. Don't forget to also follow it through to the other side. Give the drips varying heights to make it look more interesting. It's beginning to look so much more like a cake now. There is just one more hex we need to complete the slice of cake, and that is F9, C9, 8, 8. Add this new colour to your palette. And in the local view, you are going to draw on the cake like so. This will just give it a bit more of a cake texture with a touch of cuteness. Use the square brackets on your keyboard to increase or decrease the size of your brush. Always save your texture as you go along. Great stuff, we are now halfway through the texture painting. Next, we will paint the swirl, which mostly involves masking. Select the fill tool, and I'm going to give you a hex, which will be FFE4B5. Add this colour to your palette, and don't forget we have to assign the texture. Press X to switch the colours, and select the colour you use for the frosting. Turn the paint mask tool on, as well as the select box tool. In the local view, you are going to select the faces up the cream swirl like so. After this, you are going to rotate the swirl and select the faces in an alternating pattern. Your mask should look like this. Go to the fill tool and click to fill. Switch to the side view. For this part we will be using a gradient fill. Click on the arrow pointing to black and change it to the same colour as the cake fill and do the same for the other arrow. Turn the parameter for alpha all the way down and click and drag to create your gradient fill. I like to use gradient fills to add a bit of dimension to a texture, it really helps it look a lot less flat. We are now going to paint the lemon slice, so let's enter texture paint mode and assign the texture. Change the fill from gradient to colour, and please insert the hex FFD A74 which you will use to fill the lemon slice. Press X to switch the colours and the hex for the fleshy part of the lemon will be FAFF9F. Add them to your palette, change to the brush tool, and select the colour you just added again. Draw two lines across the lemon slice like so, meeting at the centre. After this, I would like you to draw the fleshy part of the lemon slice, rounding off the corners like so. Keep going until you're happy with how it looks. Next, we are going to paint the peel. I will give you the hex for it, which was FFE761. Turn on Paint Mask, select Box, and select the faces like so. Go to the Fill tool, click on the colour you just added, and click to fill. I'm just going to add a gradient here, so go to Gradient, select this colour for both, and change the Blend Mode to Multiply. After this, you're just going to click and drag to about here. There is just one final touch I'd like to add. I think they're called Shine Bubbles, I'm not so sure. Please change your colour to white, and just draw some dots on the lemon slice like so, just to add a bit more cuteness. We are now going to paint the leaves, so let's assign the texture to it, and then enter texture paint mode. Looking from the top down, please select the fill tool on colour, and I'm going to give you the hex 9BFF82. I know it's a lot of hex codes. You can, of course, use your own colours. Change the blend mode from multiply to mix and fill. Select the brush tool, and here is just one more hex for the leaf, which is 5DCAA4. Add it to your colour palette, and you can apply pen pressure to the radius and strength if you're using a tablet. You and I are going to draw two strokes up the leaf like so, one long and one short. Draw some more shadows on the bottom edge if you want a bit more definition. Go to the fill tool, select gradient, 
and select the color we just added for both sides of the gradient. Click and drag to about here and release. Finally, using the brush tool, we're just going to paint some highlights using the color white. Paint some highlights around the edges, as well as the mid-rib of the leaf. This will help the leaf pop a bit more. Add some shine bubbles at the top here to finish. Great work, the texturing for this model is now complete. You may continue to add more detail to your model however you like. There is a bonus section I have for you, where you will learn how to create a dynamic tune outline for your model. Select all of your objects like so, hit Ctrl A and apply the scale. With the plate selected, you are going to create a new material slot and name it Outline. Change the shader type to Emission and tick Backface Culling. For the colour, you can use the code BB8FF8. Next, you need to add a solidify modifier and change the thickness to a negative value. Change the offset to 0. On the normals, flip them and set the material offset to 1. With the leaf, as it is a flat object, we need to give it some thickness first, so add a solidify modifier and give the thickness a positive value of 0.06. We can now create the outline material, except this time you can select the previous one and simply copy it. For the colour, you can use the hex code 52BB8A. Now we need to add another solidify modifier, but this one will be for the outline. Scroll down and change the thickness to 0.05 and the offset to 0 and also change the material offset to 1. Repeat the same process you did for the plates for the other objects using the hex code DDAF60. To apply the same outline effect to all of the mint leaves, select them in this order and press Ctrl L, click modifiers, and press Ctrl L again and click materials. We have now reached the end of this tutorial, so I want to say thank you so much for following along. I really hope you enjoyed it and found something useful here to get you started with hand-painted texturing. I would absolutely love to see your results, so please tag me at Lumpchi so I can check them out.